So today I'm going to be making some roof racks for my tool trailer. And I'll be making them out of aluminum, which I've never really used before. Uh, but my welder is set up to weld aluminum. I've got the spool gun, so I'm going to give it a try. It'll be my first time welding aluminum. I've cast it before, but uh, I might have TIG welded it, but I've definitely never used a spool gun, so this could be my first try doing that. And so what I've got is some angle iron, and I hope to make brackets on the side like this. So this is one inch by one inch uh, aluminum tubing with one eighth walls. And I've also got inch and a half by inch and a half angle iron, also one eighth thick. And so I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna take an eight inch piece and a four inch piece. That one there is four inches. And I'm going to stand them on top of each other. So the side profile will look like this. And this will overhang the trailer roof and get screwed into the, the rail of the trailer. At the top, there's a square tube. So I'll sink a sheet metal screw tuber, tuber bracket in there. And then the top of this one will be drafted at 45 degrees just to add stability give you three full inches of support along the side so that if there's heavy things up there, if it starts to get rocking, it's not gonna wanna crack or bend over. And then just uh, flush up the bottom of these one inch pieces and run them up and then run the crossbars across. I have to determine how high to make these so they clear the roof because the roof is kind of crowned. Um, so the bars will be I think 73 and a quarter. The, the roof itself, or the side wall meets the roof of the trailer, is 73 inches across. I measured that, and it's 73 with a little bit of play, but not, not too much, just enough. So if it's 73 inside these angles, I probably have to add on an eighth on each side, giving me 73 and a quarter for the bars and then they get welded in. Once the brackets are made, I'll weld these bars in. And again, the roof is slightly crowned. Not very much, just a, that's an exaggeration. It might be, I don't know, half an inch or something over 73 inches, but I don't want them sitting right on the roof. I want them up a bit. So this should give me at least inch and a half of clearance. So this is the roof right here. And I want to come up to the top of this angle. And this will be the end of them on the inside. So I've got an inch and a half clearance. That should be enough. So I'm going to cut up all the aluminum pieces. And then once those are all cut up I, and prepped, I can get the welder set up and put the spool gun on. So I'm going to go ahead and start chopping up some aluminum. So the regular MIG gun just pops out of here. There's a screw here, you untighten a set screw and you lubricate the O-rings and you push the spool gun in and locks up to there. And of course you have to pull the wire out, cut it and just tie it back here for now. So 
it doesn't interfere with the spool gun. That little switch toggles between the MIG steel gun and then the spool gun. So I'll switch that down. And I think that's all we need to do in there that can get closed. Uh, this remains there, negative ground. Controller cable goes in there. Well, there we go. That tightens up. So this is the spool gun. It's a Magnum 100 SG. And it, I think it's the cheaper one. It's probably not as good as some of the ones you can buy, but it was Lincoln. It's made for this welder. I think it's a Princess Auto Special. Some of them I know have springs in here and probably better drive housings and stuff like that. But I've got the spool in there, got it feeding through to the front, feeds okay, runs okay. So, so far, it looks good. Okay. So, we'll set it up. Spool gun aluminum. Yep. 100% argon, you are correct, sir. So 4043 is our wire. I don't know the difference quite honestly. This is just what either came with the spool gun or with the welder. I'm select. We'll try that. And if we have to adjust the settings, we will. one's not great didn't get a lot of penetration in there have to redo that uh, this one is better I'm finding it really waxy it's really hard to work with and you can't take your time you got to really move because it's hot I think Aluminum dissipates the heat four times as quickly as uh, steel So it gets really hot But this I think I can live with I'll just grind it up This I might redo better it might be running a bit hot there's good penetration on that you can see those aren't bad a little hot there All these great wells it's definitely nothing compared to what I can do with steel but I think it'll work for this it'll be way up in the air there won't be very many people seeing this ever and it looks like they're gonna hold it looks really strong so that's really what I'm concerned about is that they're gonna stay on there
enter them on the bar. The scratch all works really good because the aluminum is so soft it marks it. So I can easily see where I have to put Just use this to square it up. amazing but I think I can live with them there's one that I'm happy with and when the cross piece goes on the top if, if it's uh, needing a little touch-up I can always run it back and fatten that up but hopefully that'll work now I'm just gonna cut the cross pieces and I'm going to try using this saw. In the past when I've cut aluminum, like aluminum railings, things like that, this works a lot better and faster. Just happen to have that other metal saw set up there, but I die grinder, that angle grinder, so I just use that. I think this will be better, cleaner cut as well, so give this a try. And these will be 73 and a quarter. is cut and the edges are chamfered so I'll just make sure it's square and I'll run some tacks on but I won't weld them completely until I can take them out and dry put them tomorrow when it's light. That should hold it just to take it out and do is I'll fit up just triple check that inside. Money. Those are nice tacks. It's getting easier. The more I do, the easier it gets to get used to it. But it's sort of a waxy puddle, and it seems to be super hot. So you got to keep moving, or else it just makes a mess. So it's been a really interesting practice. I'm glad I got to try this out. And I definitely won't be afraid to take on any projects in the future. There, so I've got them all fabbed up and tacked. And then tomorrow when it gets light out, I'll try them on the trailer just to see if they fit, make sure they're all squared. There, so I've got the three racks on. Spaced out six feet apart. So it'll give me the ability reliably to haul 20 feet if I need to. And big ladders. And I've got the clearance I need underneath there. You can see how it's slightly crowned. And I might think about some way to have attachment points for ratchet straps. But I just want to get them squared up and finished for now. Pre-drill the holes, get them mounted. We'll go from there. So 
I've got the aluminum roof racks for the trailer all finished. That's the final profile. It's a little sooty yet from the shielding gas, but it'll sit on this edge. And I've added, you know, if you can see, it's a three quarter inch by three sixteenths straight bar. Just because they were a little bit flimsy, I think they're 73 inches all the way across. And when I put them on the ground, it just pushed on them. It was flimsy, and so I decided to buttress it up, create kind of a, a T section with that piece underneath there, heavier piece. And got some okay welds out of it. Nothing mind blowing, but it'll. It'll do, I think, for this. That aluminum's really, I just found it hard to work with. The spool gun was kind of hard to work with, and it worked, I guess, but I think if I was doing a lot of aluminum, I'd invest in a good TIG welder. Um, I don't know if this one can weld aluminum TIG, I'm not sure, but if that was a possibility, if I had a bigger job to do or some production run of something, I would invest in at least at least the TIG attachment for this welder or just get a baseline, a good TIG welder, you know, for specifically for stuff like this. So these two will go on the back and the middle of the trailer at six foot centers. And then the third one will go on the front and 12. But the trailer is actually 12 plus a two foot V nose. So we've got this is three feet here, 36. So the, the nose portion, the cone comes out two feet from there. And this is gonna be a ladder. I decided to put a ladder right on the front so that I could walk from the hitch, climb up the ladder and access material from this side. So eight foot pieces basically. 10s, 12s, 14s, 16s, and then this last rung will come here. So that'll give me 12, 13, 14. So yeah, easily for 16 foot pieces, anything, basically 16 to 20 feet, well, I guess. <clears throat> and for plywood, anything eight feet long. But it's also super wide, it's as wide as the trailer. So options too for having ladders and material on at the same time. And I think as far as clamping it down. I don't really see any benefit to adding like clamp points or uh, I don't know, I was imagining a loop or part of this angle. I think I'll just slip the ratchet strap under here that the hook on it and go around any material that should work or loop it, or put it on the top, some combination. And that should just work for when I need to tie it. Especially if I'm getting to it from the front, I can tie it around this part too. Just loop it around here. So that worked pretty good. It was an experiment. This aluminum is very expensive, shockingly expensive. And I really wanted to keep it light. So I mean the whole rack, I don't know if three of them would be 20 pounds. I haven't weighed it. I'm just just going by a feel, this might be 15 or 20 pounds. It's really not a lot of weight there at all. Whereas something similar in steel would be very heavy. And I don't want to get so much weight up there or add to the overall weight of the trailer as minimally as I can. So the trade-off is price for the weight of it, definitely. I've got some thin wall steel pipe too that would have worked for this, but I don't regret it. I I'm glad I chose aluminum for the weight factor, and I like the way it looks. I like that aluminum look, and if it was a truck rack or something, I mean, if it was something at eye level even, I'd probably sandblast it, or I don't know what I'd do, sand it, maybe throw 80 or 100 on there. Those Brillo pads, those 3M pads, and shine it all up, but I think for this, it's just gonna be as is. It'll be up in the elements anyways, and it'll be, you know, get that cream on it, that sort of fog anyways, so that pasty look. But if it was a roof rack on a truck or a, a headache, a ladder rack, headache rack, or a winch bar or something, I think I'd take more time and prep it with uh, those those locking 3M pads, just 
buff it up with a die grinder and then maybe put a finish on it, I'm not sure. Or even paint it if that's if that suits the look of the design. But for this, I'm just gonna go natural and let any oxidization occur. And the next step will be getting them up, finding out where to drill the holes. I think on center is gonna work, but I just wanna double check that there's a little bit of a ribbon that goes around the end, the edges of it all the way around. So I wanna make sure I'm in the right spot, uh, attaching something securely. So I'll drill some quarter inch holes once I get them located tomorrow. Get them up there and then finish the ladder. I've got two, two little jack posts. These aren't very pretty. So that cone, it turns and comes around. And so these two will attach on the front at some sort of angle. And I can just weld that. And that'll support them. We'll be back a bit, I think, like that. And then the, that's the horizontal portion, and then the vertical ladder will just weld to this and run straight down to the, the trailer frame where the hitch is and mount onto there. So, see what that looks like. So there is the last rack, the one on the front with the ladder. I've got two supports on the cone, two on the rack, and then two at the bottom where the hitch goes. It should give me enough room to put my jack up and also to extend the jack and raise it when I need to. And these look pretty square. And it's, it's kind of a trick to this, but I think I'm learning it. It's getting better. Some of these wells aren't so bad. Some aren't that good. But there's, I could get a decent puddle going in some cases. I went into the welding shop yesterday to get some more tips so I could finish this off. And the guy working there goes, I was explaining this to him and he goes, oh, Man, welding aluminum's hard. And so I guess I felt vindicated or that it was, uh, I wasn't the only one who was struggling with it. But I think that's all. Like I said, I'll drill some holes. And then I use self-tapping screws to go into the trailer frame. I just need to locate my holes and then call this done. And then get it on tomorrow. See what it looks like. Jack. It spins down okay. And this clears the bar, which is the, one of the most important things. Okay. clearance there. Perfect. There. Got that ladder mounted on. Those racks look good. And then we're gonna go pick up some long things today. That's a little flimsy, but it's okay. Very helpful. So I'm going to go pick up some long things. See how it goes. There. <clears throat> That's with my first 16 foot piece on there. It's a garage door panel and some trim. So hold it at the back. Up and over. Nice and tight. This won't move. And strapped at the back. So these racks work exactly as I wanted them to and how I designed them to work. 
So I've got the 16 foot garage door panel. I've got 16 foot four inch brick mold. And just because, just because I can, a 20 foot piece of 316 flat bar. I just was doing several different errands today. So I picked up some flat stock. That's all on there, no problem. I'm gonna get that piece of brick mold cinched down. These things are, they work really well. Very happy with them. They seem to be quite level, quite straight. Across the top of them, flat. And they look good. I don't regret this aluminum at all. It's a good looking rack, I'll tell you that. Very happy with it. Thank you. 